What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and we're live uh, out here in Gainesville, Florida. My first time being in Gainesville, Florida. You can see the branding behind us. You know, we, we on campus. And, man, we got an exclusive interview uh, with, with a gentleman that I just met this past weekend, right? Because uh, we're, we're on campus. We've been doing a broadcast boot camp partnering with the Gator Made uh, program. And, man, I have... To the right of me, I have Mr. Deuce Spurlock. But Deuce, I'm not even going to butcher your introduction, so just take a second, man. And, well, first of all, welcome. You know, well, you, welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. welcome. And then, man, just, just tell the people a little bit about yourself, uh, just, just a little bit of background. Just go ahead, you know, and w- welcome. You know, introduce yourself to the people. I yeah. got you. So my name is Deuce Spurlock. Um, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama, but I came from all over. I've traveled from, uh, I came from Arizona. I'm born there. So. I've been around the country a little bit, uh, definitely a lot of traveling. So I uh, love, I just love Gainesville. I love it here. Uh, it's one of the best places on the planet. So yeah, it's a little bit about me. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. So we're talking, we're talking <laughs> earlier, right? And you, you brought up motocross, man. Mm-hmm. How, where did you, cause you're from Alabama, mm-hmm. but you said you were born in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Where did you get introduced to motocross and where, where did this introduction come from? Um, so I had a recent, so before uh, we moved to Alabama, actually, uh, I stayed in Virginia for a little bit, not too long, uh, not long enough for me to remember when I was younger. Okay. But uh, I remember there was a time where I rode dirt bikes when I was younger and all that. So there's times where I would just go outside and like my neighborhood was kind of like a big circle. And uh, our neighbor, his name is Mr. Bob. And uh, I remember I went over there, um, took my, my little dirt bike at the time, took it over there to him put the limiter, he took the limiter off without my mom knowing. So that's actually new news to her. So she finds that, <laughs> if she finds that out, if she finds that out. Uh, but yeah, took the limiter off, and just would go around for days. And so like, it was something that I figured out I like, I loved really early on, like motocross, MotoGP, like any type of racing, really. I just, I love it all, yeah. Okay, all the way. Okay, so motocross is the bike. And dirt bike. Okay, mm-hmm. so what's the, you said GP, MotoGP? MotoGP what's is that? like a, uh, that's like, uh, like you see like super bikes. So it's like, uh, it's like the bikes you'll see on the street, but way more powerful. So uh, I'm trying to think, uh, do you know who Valentino Rossi is? I'm not gonna know none of these people that you say. I'm gonna let you know right now. I don't know nothing about more, like, I mean, I've seen, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've seen like on ESPN how they go mm-hmm. and do the, and do all the tricks and all that and do the race. I've, mm-hmm. I've seen those, but I haven't watched it enough to know like the names uh, of the people that you would mention or the people Man. that you like and enjoy watching. Tell me. So yes. it's okay. So yeah. you said so super bikes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a super bike is a bike that we would see on the street looks normal, but at it the same time it's like it's oh, or it looks oh it's okay bike. okay. Um, I had to pull up a picture for you. Okay, but uh, it's it's like it's like a racing bike. Uh huh. Um, and they go on different tracks. It's tracks across like the globe, and you can go anywhere. Like there's tracks in Spain. There's tracks in Germany. Like just tracks everywhere. Um, and they go across and they travel to each track and they race basically and they have like uh, they have a, a race like it's like a mini race before the race and all that type of stuff but yeah it's, it's super bikes and it's like like Ducati, Honda like all those type of different Yamaha so it's yeah it's, 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 a, it's a global thing it's pretty global okay so okay so you, you, you saw motocross when you were younger mm-hmm. and you were this is when you was riding like this is when you started yeah. to ride this is, the limiter got took off sorry mm-hmm. mom you know sorry mom the limiter <laughs> got took off which is which I'm guessing is it's the thing that allows you to go like just mm-hmm. go past whatever barrier that the speed was set to mm-hmm. okay but but then when did you start to like go from just watching it and doing it to like studying and learning more because how, how you breaking it down like i can tell you've been you take some time you've taken some time yeah. to like you know go and watch some youtube videos read this mm-hmm. read that like when, when did that point come to where it's like this isn't something that's just cool this isn't just like a hobby like this is something i want to learn more about and go more mm-hmm. into depth so is i won't say um i've definitely gotten to a more recently heavy okay uh with me me and my mom are actually getting a motorcycle uh she's taking her msf course right now which is the endorsement you get for it's basically like your license for driving a car and so she's taking that course now like during this weekend and so we were going to do that together but uh i'm down here and she's in alabama so uh yeah we were going to do it together but we ended up having she's taking hers right now i'm getting all my stuff and then i'm gonna take it a little later but um, it's definitely become something more I've, I've researched and got into, like, especially with me getting a motorcycle, because I want to be able to, like, 
take care of my motorcycle, have it like last as long as possible. So I feel like that, like something that I took more seriously recently, but I've always like had a passion for, like just racing in general um, for since a young age, because I've been into NASCAR, I've been into it all, so. Hold on, wait, so your, so your mom, she rides already or she had? She's, so she told Talk me about yesterday. it, talk about it, talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday uh, she took her first day. She's, uh, it's a three day, it's a weekend course. Um, and yesterday was her first day. And they were telling her, she was like, wow, I can't believe, like, this is your first time riding a motorcycle? Like, she was like, yeah. It was like, yeah, going through the weeds and all that stuff, you doing good, no falls. So I'm like, shoot, if she can do that good, I know I know I can do something. So yeah, it's, it's like something that, that's really cool. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's, it's just, I feel like that, that the, the rush you get from riding a motorcycle is just like, top tier like you can't get nothing else like it like i know you can have a convertible and you had the wind blowing and all that stuff for sure but like when you got the wind blowing on your chest you know what i'm saying it's it's, it's different i was gonna ask you yeah. what i was gonna ask you like what is it what is it about about it that like was it the rush is it you like to live on the edge is it like just the adrenaline man it's it's yeah because i mean as far as adrenaline wise I've been on roller coasters. I've, I've done a lot of stuff, like, but like, it's just like not there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, went to Six Flags, the Goliath, supposed to be the biggest, biggest mm-hmm. roller coaster in the South. I ain't really, it was all right. <laughs> it was all right. It wasn't too bad. But uh, I just feel like being able to like watch racing, especially like, because it's something I've been watching since I was young. Okay. Um, and that's as close as like you're gonna get to it, is actually being out on the road, like, and it being able to experience it, I feel like that's something that really like entices me to get on a motorcycle and just go ride. Or like, and like the biking community is like top tier. Like there's people in there that you can meet all different backgrounds, but like they can be your brothers for life too. So like, it's just like football. You get a good community in and you're like, oh, all different people from different places. It's just like that in the bike community. So I feel like that's something that really like enticing me and pushing me towards the bike community and like wanting to be a part of like the bike community. Wait, the bike, okay, so the bike community, how, how did we find out about the biking community? Where do you, like, you found a Facebook group, where we found uh, Eventbrite, like, what do we, how, how do we come across this? Um, really, so I first started, like, uh, seeing the bike community on TikTok, which is, oh, like, okay. uh, which is, which is more, like, vast, because, like, you don't know necessarily where people are based at, mm-hmm. but um, when you go into that, uh, there are actually like apps that you can get like i don't know right now like what app i'm going to use but um there are apps that you can get um where you can actually get like a community of people and then like when you're riding you have like different channels like a blue like a helmet has a bluetooth or like well my helmet has a bluetooth in it okay and so people have that uh like same type of device in their helmet you okay. can all just connect in together uh. and like so you can meet people set stuff up and all that type of stuff so Definitely becoming something more more uh, recently where I've gotten into like seeing people around Gainesville in the biking community. So for sure, for sure. Okay, so we're so we're in Gainesville now. Where where were we at before Gainesville? Uh, I came from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. Uh, so one of the it's one of the best, another great spot. Ann Arbor, Michigan, one of the best spots on the planet too. Okay. What, mm. what if you don't mind me at like what 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 brought you down here? Because I mean I like, I know with the transfer portal and all this, people have their misconceptions or people have their beliefs. But I always wanted to ask like anybody who transferred, like what was what was the cause for you wanting to transfer? I feel like for me it was more personal. Uh, my family, uh, it's it's a distance. Uh, traveling up north is definitely harder than traveling down south because it's cold. And so like, that's crucial for people like my grandma who wants to come watch a game mm. or like some of my uncles who like can't really travel like that because my family's from Louisiana. So it, I think it's definitely easier for them to travel to Florida than it is to, mm. uh, to Michigan. But um, that is, is that family definitely played a, a factor in why I left. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. That makes sense. I get that. Okay, so you're okay. So you're here. You said redshirt sophomore, mm-hmm. right? Okay. And what what do we what are we studying? What, what's what's our current area of fo- focus for the study? Right now, I'm taking educational sciences. Uh, so it's definitely something that I'm interested in. What is educational science? Break that down, because you know I I don't know what that is. Uh, so basically, educational sciences is just like overall like how people learn and like what people like what ways work best for other people. Mm. And then uh, the path I'm taking is I'm gonna take a focus in career tech or educational technology. 
Okay. So like basically devices that help learn it, like people learn are like uh, new technology or like new apps. So like things that'll help like other people or other students who mm -hmm. want to learn, like basically make it easier for them to access or have that information for them to learn. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and were your, your parents in, in the educational field, or is this something that you just nah. just came upon? Your how'd you come how'd you come into this then with the, with the, um, wanting to teach and wanting to help people learn better? I guess it came from just I guess it came from me personally, like having tougher experiences with like learning. Um, it's definitely like something I was like. There's times where I wanted information and I just mm. couldn't get it, especially Man. like when I was younger, like in high school. Uh, there's like times where I'll try to search and I'm looking, I'm like. I'm not really getting nothing right now, like, man. So I feel like it just came from more from me, like wanting to be around, like be able to have like an impact on students, like have a direct impact because my teachers had an impact on me. So For sure. I feel like if I could like have an impact on them like that, and then while I'm also at it, like be able to give them technology, give them like apps and all that stuff that can help them broaden their knowledge. I feel like that's kind of where it just rooted up for me. For sure, would you, would you consider yourself tech savvy? A little bit, a little bit. I, I definitely say I have a I have a way to maneuver around technology. So okay, man. Okay, so you said you wanted to get in this because you said there were points to where you got into a you know you got into a spot to where mm -hmm. you know you wanted to go further, but it was like a roadblock type deal. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I get that, man. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, this weekend we got to link up. We got to meet. You know, of course. Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, for for the for the. For the broadcast boot camp put on by Gator May, shout out to Savannah, shout out to Dr. Ali, shout out to Spikes, shout out to uh, Diane, shout out to Jeff, everybody who made it happen, right? Indeed. <laughs> uh, talk, just just talk, talk a little bit about your experience. You can talk about all of it. You can talk about. Mm -hmm. I know we talked earlier <laughs> <laughs> just about the podcast, yeah, but you you but you can you can talk about all of it. Like like what like coming into it, uh, what was the thing that you were most fearful of? Let, let's let's start there. Um, I think the biggest fear for me was probably like getting in front of that camera and talking. Mm. I think, I think a lot of it was just like, cause I'm not really a, a camera heavy person. Okay. So my mom's been telling me to get more in front of the camera and all that stuff. And I felt like this opportunity that Gator May created, like definitely helped me like step in front of that camera and be able to conquer some of my fears. So like, I think that's probably like one of the biggest things, um, that worried me the most, but that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, so you said that was one of the biggest fears. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's, let's talk about just going going through the process of it, like going through what? Because first, y'all start with the play by play. Mm -hmm, the well, play -by -play. Talk, talk, talk a little bit about talk a little bit about that because that was oh, wild. Being in that room, that was wild. That was man. Wild. When I tell you, play by play has got to be one of the hardest stuff to do, um, because when you're doing play by play, it's you're doing like it's on a normally over a radio. So like the description you're having to do, especially over football or like other sports. Uh, like especially for football, um, you're doing seven second plays, but you're having to describe everything that you see in that play. So when we did the Charlotte game, um, so during the Charlotte game we did uh, Ricky's great catch. Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. So that was an empty set. So you're having to explain to the the people who are riding, like maybe listening on the road or like mm -hmm. who maybe just like watching the watching the game over uh, instead of like listening to the TV copy, uh -huh. they like listening on the radio. So you're sure. having to explain to people that there are three receivers on the bottom, two at the top, the defense is spread out, you yeah. know, what yard, like what yard line, the distance, where they're at. So like, it's like you have to put so much information in those seven seconds mm -hmm. and you have to do that every play, every play. So I think that's really what makes play by play hard, which gave me ultimate respect for him because that was like, like when I sat in there and tried to do it, like it was like, wow. Yeah it's a lot of information you have to put in seven seconds and so uh -huh. that's why i was like yeah that's that's definitely like one of the toughest things i think over this weekend and it gave me admiration and definitely wanted me to learn like push me to learn more about it too yeah and then also just take into account that you know like your level of football iq is probably mm -hmm. like you know like we'll, we'll go upwards in the one to ten you'll be upwards and there could be somebody listening who might be at like one two three mm -hmm. you know no telling so you're using language, and especially like now, with you currently competing, mm -hmm. you know the fr the language that you'll use on the field and in the huddle. You have to flip a switch yeah. off and then flip a different switch on mm -hmm. to talk and use language and terminology that the right. rest of us can understand. <laughs> Man, okay, so play by play, mm -hmm. and then uh, what? Day two, and then and then day two. What 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 we talking about? Day two. Day two was uh, we went on camera, like on the set, teleprompter, and teleprompter, Ooh. and then we had to go. Man, 
when I tell y'all, when I tell y'all, like, having the stand up, like, the teleprompter, I, I like that. The teleprompter is cool. I like it. But when you have to stand in front of, like, when you get a one-minute cut up of a film and you have to just come up with your own script and you have to, like, I'm like, man, I'm up there. I'm like, how am I going to describe this? Like, Ricky made a great catch, but how do I want to, how do I want to tell it to the people? Like, how do I want to get their attention? How do I want to, like, make it to where, like, they come back, they be like, oh, my gosh, let me, let me go tell my friends about this, you know? That's, like, that, that day, too, that day, too, was, like, some serious. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then we did the interviews. The interviews mm-hmm. was day, oh, too. Yeah, the talk, 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 talk about that. How, how, was your, how, was your, how was your experience being a host? Mm-hmm. Being a host is definitely, like, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of preparation. Um, you have to be able to prepare. You have to know who you're interviewing. Uh, so I think that's probably one of the most important things that I definitely mm-hmm. learned from interviewing. Um, because if you don't know anything about them, then how are you going to interview them? Like you said, it's going to be a surface level interview. Yeah, and yeah. you don't ever want like a surface level interview because then it really won't be like interesting to the to the people. So For sure. I think like definitely researching. Uh, but it was definitely like fun experience because Noel, the person I interviewed, mm-hmm. he's from Germany. And so, like, he's an international student. So there's, like, there's not many, well, here there's not many international students mm. um, on the football team especially. Okay. So I feel like having his perspective and, like, how he got into football because in Germany, soccer or soccer is the best, like, most prominent sport. Mm-hmm. So for him to get into football, um, that's obviously something that I wanted to talk about. And then uh, just how like his journey brought him over here to America and then how it brought him here to Gainesville. Yeah. And so I think just being able to know who I was interviewing and then being able to just have the conversation run smoothly and be able to like talk to him, like, cause you have to know who you're talking to, being able to have like, when that conversation gets stuck, be like, oh, you did this or like, oh, um, in Germany, something like that. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to uh, just really um, make him feel like, well, I was trying to make him feel as comfortable as possible For while sure. he was interviewing. For sure. So that's why I feel like uh, being a host was definitely like a great experience for me, especially because I want to get into podcasting later down the line. That helped that experience is definitely something that I feel like I can take in my back pocket and run with. What about you being a guest? Being a guest, man, it's like, Especially if you have a great person asking you the questions. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great person asking you the questions and like they're giving you like the freedom to like to talk and express yourself. I feel like when you're comfortable like that, it's just like it's like the camera's not even there. You're just talking. Mm. Uh, so I feel like as a guest, it's just, you know, bring a good energy, a good vibe and just be able be willing to be open and express yourself because that's the whole reason you came to be a guest is just to express yourself and be open with the people and like give them what they want to see like they want to see sure. something new and be able to uh, interact or like see different people's like way they've lived yeah. so I feel like as a guest it's just like just be open and honest about what you're saying what, what you're telling people and uh, yeah. definitely you'll have a good conversation and that can last a long time um, so yeah, for sure. Oh, and then day three, day three. Today was today was all podcasting. All huh? We podcasting. talked about well, we we talked about. I'll let you share with people what we talked. So, what did you get from today? We talked about today. I think the biggest thing I got uh, from today was just know what you want to do, like, and then have your core value set. So like, if you have a if, like, let's say you're going through a rocky time or whatever like that, you have your core values, so you know why you're pushing through, and you know what people you want to reach. And so when you're trying to reach those people then it's like you feel that purpose within you just feel like I feel like I have to reach these people today like I want to help these people Mm -hmm. and so uh that like definitely having your three core values that that definitely stuck with me from today um especially on myself because I feel like core values are what makes a person so like if you uh like the way you carry yourself every day is like you may meet somebody or like a person and uh, like, let's say your core values aren't straight, um, then you never know, they, you might give them a bad interaction. They might remember that interaction forever. Mm. Or like that might be somebody like you meet later down the line. Um, and I feel like those core values can you be used the same in podcasting, like you told us. Uh, just be able to just be able to know what like type of content you want to create and then know who you're trying to reach. So that's, that's why I feel like today was definitely, uh, every day was important. But I feel like today, especially for me, uh, who wants to get in the podcast later down the line, or shoot, 
Maybe not later down the line. No, it's not going to yeah. be down the line. Don't worry, dude. It's not going to be down the line. We're going to get you straight. I told you I'm going to get y'all straight. We're going to get y'all straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, that, that's, that, that's, that's cool. That's, that's cool, mm-hmm. man. Just, uh, you know, being able to see what y'all, what y'all took away. And, right. Well, wait, before, before today, have you done any editing whatsoever? Any video nah, editing? Like today really? was my first day. Like, oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. Like on TikTok, even when I like do post a video, uh-huh. I normally just take, do like take after take after take uh-huh. until I get the take I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just post it, but it's not like, uh, I really don't, I really don't, nah, no editing, no nothing like Man. all this. This whole entire experience was really like a first for me. So wow, that's cool. Yeah, nothing. Well, now I mean, after this, you know, I'll, I'll show you a few few more tricks we can show on on, on the editing too. I got you. I got yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's cool, man. Because I mean, this mm-hmm. was real cool for me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, get getting to hang with y'all and just be be a part of the guy. I told uh, I told Spikes yesterday. I, said, I feel like one of the recruits because I was out there on the lawn, the food mm-hmm. trucks. I was eating. Yeah. I was like, where are we paying? I was like, nah, they, they, we took for took care mm-hmm. of it already. I said, oh, oh, let me dig in. Let me get some donuts and mm-hmm. get a strawberry lemonade. <laughs> So yeah, man, this this been real, 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 real cool, man, mm-hmm. real cool. But uh, one one thing I want to ask you um, is, how do you? I just I'm going deep, just out of nowhere, just going no, deep. It's all good. But uh, how how do you want to be remembered, right? Yeah. How do I you want to like, be remembered, Deuce? Um, honestly, I want to be remembered as like a great person. You know, I feel like I try to I try to have a positive outcome every day, like. I want to go through life with a positive attitude because um, everybody has their own struggles and everybody has their like trials and tribulations. Uh, so I feel like if I'm a great person and I like help somebody else, like give them maybe like a compliment, you know, that they'll remember me as like, oh, I, he made me feel like good. Like he made me feel like I was wanted. So I feel like that's that's like I want to be as a remembered as a person who care for other people and like care for their family. Like he was just a, like a good dude. You know, like anybody can talk to me. Like I feel like I'm open. So I feel like just being remembered as a, a great person and being able to pass down information and be able to, to like communicate with people and like just good traits and all that. I want to be remembered as like a a person who's able to relate with everybody and just help people. That's what's up. All right, so Deuce, there, there, there's a there's a part of the show where I like to do like some rapid fire questions just to mm-hmm. make it fun. Uh, it's called this or that. So you pick one or the other. I got you. Right, you no, got me. No explanations okay. needed. Just, just well, no, no. That. But if you want to, you can give explanations. People always end up. They, they try to like justify the answers. Mm-hmm. They're got like, you. oh no, but I want to. do You can. I, I, ain't, I ain't tripping. I got you. you I got know, you. I, I ain't tripping. Okay, so are you ready? Yeah. yeah okay. Ready. Okay. Certified. Bacon or sausage? Sausage. Okay. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Chick food. Pancakes. Okay. Why well, definitely pancakes? Dude, like waffles. I, I don't know. You just you just can't get a clean cut in waffles. <laughs> like every time every time I try to cut, like I know you got the little you know the lines in between, but yeah. I like try to get my mind like nice and small. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. do it. So yeah, because you can't take the whole triangle. Yeah. And it's too much. You can't. It's like, too you much. Can't. Yeah. You okay. Can't. No. Okay. Uh, Chick Fil A or Popeyes? Popeyes. Okay. Okay. Just just drink water with them biscuits. <laughs> drink something with them biscuits. If you don't, you will you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, you like you, you even like the Popeye spicy sandwich better than mm. Chick Fil A spicy sandwich? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. That's okay. Uh, beaches or mountains? Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go beaches. Okay. Work hard, play hard. Work hard. Okay. Okay. Winter or summer? I'm gonna go winter. I'm gonna go winter. Small gathering, big party. Small gathering. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why, 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 why small gathering? You seem like a big party type of guy. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, <laughs> I like, I have, I like, I, I, <laughs> I have a select amount of friends, you know, Understood. that I would like bring back to my, my apartment or my home or something like that. For sure. For sure. But like, if I'm at a big gathering, you know, I won't complain. Yeah. 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 But cool. If it was but me personally, like starting out. You ain't bringing all them people to the house. Man. All y'all can't be in the house with the little dog. Man. Nah. My dog gonna get too happy. Yeah. He might. Oh, that um, is true. That he, is. He might. He might start okay. jumping on people. I can't even. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, man, uh, I was about to come with a football question. Big sack, big interception. Interception, for sure. Really? Yeah. Cause you turn like they turn the ball over. You create you create a turnover. Mm. 
So now if you would have said strip sack or interception, I'm going oh, with strip sack. Oh, oh, oh yeah, because that's two. That's, that's two for one. Mm-hmm. Mm. You get the sack, and you get the forced fumble, uh, and you get the turnover. So uh, three for one. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. All right, all right. Yeah. You made it through. You made it through. <laughs> you made it through. So I have this sec. Well, first, first, uh, tell the people where they can find you, follow you, connect with you. Like, what's uh, the best way? Just let them know. You can find me on Instagram, Deuce Dot Spurlock, D E U C E. Uh, you can find me on basically anything. It's all the same. So. X, you can well Twitter, X, whatever y'all want to call it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, TikTok, okay. TikTok, the same thing. Pretty simple. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So man, we, we had pretty good chat. Pretty good yeah. chat. So uh, before we end this thing out, I want to give you the chance to. Uh, this is our dear student athlete segment, mm-hmm. and I like to you know kick it to current current uh, student athletes and you know also former, mm-hmm. uh, but you current. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, what would be one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Um, I definitely say. Um, be organized. Being organized, I feel like, is one of the most crucial things of being a student athlete, especially dealing with like today's schedule because we have NIL now. So I feel like being organized, uh, you have school to deal with, you have football practice or whatever sport you're getting into. Um, and then you have like, let's say you're do- building your own brand, you're doing all that. Like, like me, I want to do podcasting, YouTube and all that stuff. So there's going to be three things and then I'm going to have a dog. So that's four things. So like, I feel like being organized and being able to cut up your slices of day, like the pieces of your day, and like just saying this, I'm, I'm gonna do, like let's say, I'm gonna take my dog for a walk at like 10.30, then I'm gonna sit down at 12 and do homework. I feel like that'll really help simplify what you have to do during school. It makes it so much easier. So much easier. Yeah. That's good, man. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I agree. Ain't nobody ever shared that one either. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Organization is like, is like a skill i feel like that you can take it to the real world like mm-hmm. well we are in the real world yeah but yeah yeah like into uh like a, a more current job and i feel like organization will be like crucial because you don't want to like you don't want to go through your computer and then you looking for files that you need or like like dang where's this hard drive or something like that so i feel like if you be organized then it's a it's a skill that it, like last you through life but when did when did you learn to be organized when I got into college, I learned that my first goes, yeah. my first year, it was tough. Uh, I'm like scrambling around, like trying to find like homework, uh-huh. like, cause most of the stuff, most of the stuff be on computer, but like it's them assignments that you get on paper, mm. and you're like, man, I don't know where this assignment at. <laughs> like hopefully one of my teammates, you know, like we in the same class. For sure. But I think that I definitely learned it my freshman year at Michigan, uh, cause Michigan taught me a lot, like deep respect uh so i think that like first year really taught me how to be a student athlete that's awesome man deuce man appreciate appreciate you, appreciate you man Shaw, appreciate, appreciate you, you me on man I'm, I'm looking forward to coming down to a game man if it's in down here yeah. or if it's when y'all come out to texas man. but I'm, I'm gonna have to pull up man i'm gonna have to pull up of course of course yeah, it's I'm gonna, gonna be a up. great game we're gonna have a yeah. great season for yeah. sure. I'm looking forward to it, man. And now I can cheer for y'all by name. I'm like, I know that. I know that. <laughs> All right. But, man, as, as for y'all, we about to get out of here. Uh, this has been another episode of Beyond the Ball. Be sure to uh, subscribe to the podcast, right? You can subscribe to the channel on YouTube. It's just under Speak Your Success because that's our media company right there. So be sure to subscribe, Speak Your Success Media, and comment down below what you thought about what Do said. If you're in the motocross, Comment down below, because I want to see how many more people in the motocross. But uh, we're going to get out of here. But until next time, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help student-athletes succeed beyond their degree.